ישראל, ברוך השם, קבר דוד המלך, דיוויד סטון, תקדם את קבלת עד כה. אני רוצה להסביר היום, איך זה שיש לנו את הפרמיש לעשות מה שאנחנו עושים? איך אני אתן קלאסות לאנשים שבאמת אני לא יודע איפה הם נכנסים? It says in the, it says in the, in the Gemara, in Masechet Chagiga, whoever wants to be involved with Kabbalah, you have to, first of all, know basically all the Torah, to fill himself with all of the Halachot, and the Gemarot, and Midrashim, and then slowly, slowly, he has the permission, if he's very, very viable, and, and so on, and so then this Rabbi is telling him slowly, slowly, the secrets of the Torah. Right? And it says there that, You say it only for one, only for one, one student that he chachamum vin midat or that he understand from himself. If you tell him one thing, and he understand, he can develop it the, by himself the the idea, the concept, and to understand by himself all the applications of that without you telling him. So how can how can I and other rabbis <coughs> do? Thank you very much. Do all of those different classes for everybody in such an open way? Okay. That's first question. Second question, some people they say, okay, so according to those sources, so I should not learn uh, Kabbalah. So even though I'm interested, I'm interested to learn Kabbalah, but if this is not the right thing for me, so maybe it will harm me. Maybe it will make damage to my, to my spirit, to my, to my uh, mental, uh, whatever, different things and uh, there's all kinds of stories about people that you know, that got lost their mind got crazy all kinds of different stories I don't know if you heard about those stories but okay so what about that is it true is it dangerous or no so I want to refer to those questions because this questions that comes again and again so even though we spoke about it in the past but it's always good to remind ourselves but first of all let me say bracha. Baruch. So, first of all, there is obviously within anything. There's level upon levels, levels upon levels upon levels, meaning every person is liable for in, in some degree, okay? Let's say if, if we give, if we give the, the comparison between the physical and the spiritual, so if I will ask you If you meet the guy in the street and he's asking you to give him some money right it happens all the time right so if it is a small amount probably you give if you have in the pocket why not if it's bigger amount so it depends how the person looks if it if it's something if it looks something that it's serious and so on so then a little bit more just And as much as the, as, the, as the amount increases, so then you have more expectations from the guy to show that he's more serious, that he's more reliable, maybe you want to have witnesses, maybe you want to write a document, and so on and so forth, right? According to the amount that you give, so you expect the person to show, to give you back, in extent for what you give him, something that is more significant. The way that he speaks, the, like explanations why he needs the money, so on and so forth, all kinds of things, right? If it's someone that you really know, so you, it can be a very significant amount. If it's someone that you really admire, it may be, maybe you give him all what you have. Depends. What is the, what is the level that, that you know the person, how much, how much you, you can rely on him, right? Now let's go back to the spiritual. There is a certain amount of knowledge 
of the Kabbalah that it can be shared with anyone, any human being, Jewish, not Jewish, observant, not observant, whatever. Why? Because all human beings have the common denominator of desire to connect to something higher. Even if they cannot define exactly what it is, what does it mean, but there's a certain built-in, um, I wouldn't say interest, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the right word, built-in thirst, built-in need to connect to something that is higher, something that is bigger, to have meaning to, to, to our life as human beings. So to answer those questions is something that is humanly. So before, before being Jewish or being observant, that's something that is for all human beings. Now obviously, anyone that he wants to go deeper and deeper and deeper, so as much as he wants to go deeper to the deeper secrets of the Kabbalah. So also he needs to perform more. Whatever it is, there's different levels, right? Someone that, that he wants just the basic. So it's enough for him to, to keep only the basic. Excuse me. Someone that he wants a little bit more than that. So he needs to keep a little bit more than that, right? So there was a, some one time I, I think I told you the story. One time there was someone that commented on one of my classes on the Facebook that this is the Kabbalah of the of the Orthodox Jews. There is Kabbalah of like everybody, and there is Kabbalah of the Orthodox Jews. So like so that's what I'm teaching. So now I know where is my box. Okay. <laughs> so for me. I saw, I, it was like, uh, it was very amusing and I started to argue with him, like, what does it, like, is, like, what kind of other Kabbalah there is? So, he, this guy is coming from background of the Kabbalah Center that I think that most of the people here heard about it, that there is, like, no demands. Anyone that wants to come, welcome, just pay the, the fee of uh, whatever it costs and you, you, can, you can hear, you can listen, you can participate, no problem. Now, for me, I, 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 I'm not, there is many people that are very, very uh, passionate against it. For me, I'm not, I'm not against it. Just everybody needs to know their place. So for many people, it's very good what Kabbalah Center and other people that are similar to what they do are uh, teaching. Because people that, that there's, there is people that they will see me with the, the yamuka and the beard and all of that, so they will get scared. Ah, this rabbi, he wants to, to, to tie me and to block me, that I won't be able to do all what I want in my life, and then I won't be able to go after, to do all those fun things of driving in Shabbat and uh, this and that, and so I don't want to listen to him, that God forbid he won't convince me, and I will uh, be, <laughs> be religious for the rest of my life, <laughs> right? There is people that that's what they think. So what they do? So they go to a place like Kabbalah Center or other rabbis that are like that there's no demands. And they listen to some words. And obviously the words there it has some 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 foundation. It comes from some kind of truth, even though they added a lot, but there is there is a good sources in the right source from the Zohar, from Rabbi the Ravashla Zatzal. So Anyone that he have a seed of truth that his neshama recognizes and connect, so then he wants to have more, and 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 then he, he see that after a while that what those guys are teaching him is not really satisfying him. So after his neshama recognizes that there is truth there in the Torah, in Kabbalah, <coughs> and he see that whatever they give him is not enough. So then he might come to someone like me or other places, whatever, Esha Torah, different places that uh, they, they, they are also open, but also have a certain demands for some guidelines. 
right so <clears throat> now why is it needed again why is it needed to have some guidelines to have some borders of what is permitted what is forbidden and so on because as much as a person he wants to go inside of the wisdom of the Kabbalah so he needs to have spiritual protection why because it's like let's go back to the to the parable of money okay if you're going with the hundred dollar bill on you okay fine not such a big deal if you start to carry on you big amounts of money so you start to be nervous you don't know you don't want people to know about it because there's people that are that might steal it might uh, you know if you go in certain places with a certain amount of money it's a it's a life danger people people get killed for those things right as much as a person have more wealth so he needs to protect himself right the poor guy doesn't need security camera on his, on, on his house why because there's, there's nothing to steal if there, if a robber will come in he will see that it's a, there's, there's nothing to, to to take from there so you just leave right someone that is as much as a person have more wealth so he needs more security right so in the same way go back to the spiritual when a person he, he doesn't have anything and he just go as, goes after his lust and desires so he, his, his neshama is not really receiving the light because he cannot hold the light it's like a vessel that have holes so how much how much how much tea I can hold if the cup have a hole? A tiny bit of tea will left. You can pour the tea and it goes out. A tiny bit will stay. So someone that, that is not is not keeping anything. It's the same way. <clears throat> when a person is guarding himself more and more, so he's building spiritual protection. The mitzvot is the guidelines that we got from Hashem that we will be able to contain to hold the spiritual abundance so i'm not saying that someone that is not keeping all the mitzvot should not be involved with that and should not meditate I'm saying go for it do it but you have to know that even though you can have all kinds of experiences we do it but you not you cannot hold the abundance it goes out as, in, as the same way it comes in the same way it goes out like the cup of the tea, you pour the, the, the tea and it just goes out. <coughs> At a certain point, the person understands that he's losing more than what he's gaining, so then he's, uh, he's starting to go, he goes back and he starts to build himself from scratch in the right, the right way. Now, again, as much as a person gains more wealth, spiritual, so he needs more protection okay so for example myself when i went to learn in the yeshiva betel the kabbalist yeshiva in the old city about 15 years ago not something like that 16 years ago so the rabbi there he asked me are you married yet i said not yet he said so come back when you're married then i'll teach you why because when you get married, Medrash Hashem soon by all of you, Amen. so it makes spiritual protection. It gives extra spiritual protection. Someone that is married but there's no uh, domestic peace between him and his wife, so there's holes in the wall that supposed to protect him. Okay, as much as a person is more sensitive and more care about his wife and there's, so they have more harmony between them so the wife gives him the spiritual protection that he can really dwell more and more into the depths of the wisdom so again also about that also about that if you would have want to go to learn in the yeshiva where I was learning for more than 10 years they wouldn't accept you why? Because there they're dealing with you know hardcore stuff. It's the the covenant of the Rashash and the 
you know, the, the deep advanced meditations. So then, it's also, for sure you have to be Jewish, for sure you have to be full observant, but also you need to do extra things. Also you have to be married, also you have to, to do all kinds of tikkunim, fast days, all kinds of different things, to be qualified to build for yourself more and more spiritual protection that when you get the abundance, so it will be kept. Okay. Now, again, there's many, many, many levels, endless levels. Okay. As much as you want to be serious, as much as you want to gain more wealth for your neshama, you have to make sure that you're building yourself in the right way. So, about uh, 20 years ago, almost 19 years ago, when I started to be involved, to be interested in, in learning Kabbalah, <coughs> so the first rabbi that I was learning by him, Ravit Amal, so he told me, if you, when you learn halakha, you're building the vessels. Then you can learn Kabbalah. And that's the light that fills the vessels. So for me, for many years, that was, that was the, all what is halakha is about. It's just a preparation to get to learn Kabbalah. Is so I, I remember one time, one time I went uh, to a Chabad Kolel. And you know, in, in Chabad, they first they learn Hasidut, and then in the rest of the day, after after their prayer, they learn Allah uh, Gemara. And for me, it was the opposite. In the beginning of my day, I was learning Halakha, like this rabbi told me to build the vessels, and then the rest of the day I would learn Hasidut and Kabbalah. <laughs> so they told me that that, that I'm, I'm switching the 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 thing away, the, the whole order upside down, but. For me, it worked. Anyhow, um, what to learn first, what to learn after, that's like secondary. But the main thing is, is that when a person wants to complete himself, to, be, to, to have a complete structure, so you have to have time to learn all the Torah. So when you go according to the, to the order of the Arizal, he said it, oh, by the way, in Shara Mitzvot, in Parashat V'Adchanan, so the order is first to learn the Torah, then Nevin, Tuvi, Mishnah, Gemara, Alakha, and then Kabbalah. So Kabbalah is the Neshama that dwells within all of the Torah. When someone is learning all, only the first levels, and he doesn't get to the higher levels, so it's good, but there's a lot that is missing. Right? And if you want to have the complete system, you have to go to all of those stages. And then the Kabbalah that you learn have all of those garments that are the spiritual protection. Okay? Obviously, we have to work on applying whatever it is that we're learning. Right? I'm not speaking only about Alakha. Whatever it is, whether the person is learning, it's very, very important to, to try to find what can you apply from whatever it is that you learn. That's, by the way, is brought down by in the, in the letter of the Ramban that he wrote to his son. So he wrote there, before you finish your learning, stop for one second, one moment, and think, what can I apply, how can I apply what I just learned? This is something that is very, very fundamental. Also about al but even about Tanakh. Okay, so you can ask me, how can I apply the Tanakh? I learn about uh, Parashat HaShavua, for example, right? Mas A. What, how can I apply the, the verses that, I, when I, that I'm reading in Shlami Krava Chat Targum of Parashat Mas A? Hmm? So, okay, it's a question. I can give you my personal interpretation, but you have to think for yourself when you're learning it to learn it in a, in a certain state of mind that you want to apply it so even if it won't happen even if you won't find but if this is your attitude to the Torah it's a, it, it gives you a certain direction in your learning 
that you're trying to bring the learning that it will be applicable, that it will be not only theoretical, that it will come into your life, mm -hmm. really. Okay? That's, by the way, one of the differences between the Torah and many other religions. What we're trying to do is always to combine everything together, to unify, to bring the spiritual into the physical. When, when you doing some mitzvah and you meditating while you're doing the mitzvah on the specific meditation that is related to mitzvah this is like you know atomic bomb it's like the spiritual energy that it generates is huge why because you're combining in one moment all of the different dimensions if you have the the practice act and also the speech and also the thought and also the high levels of the meditation and you bring it all together becomes to generate huge amount of light now <clears throat> basically I gave the answer but I want to summarize it make, to make sure that we're all on the same page and we understood what was said Okay, the first question was how is it possible to do those broadcasts and to speak so openly about the Kabbalah and so on and so forth. So, what basically the, the answer is, there's really there's few answers. I didn't, I didn't give a full answer, but part, the part of that I did answer is that all of those classes that I give is a certain introductory classes that the idea is that the person will have the taste of the real Kabbalah, the real stuff, the traditional way of how to relate to Kabbalah, and I hope that it will inspire people to, to have the desire to go in deeper, to take, it, to take it more seriously, to be more sincere and to be more dedicated, and then it can, it can build up, and the same, the same words, the same classes, when someone is more um, dedicated to the practice of it, it will mean more for, the, for, for a person like that. Someone that in his head is like, eh, maybe yes, maybe no, no, no. Okay, so it's also good, but the, the, it's not the full potential. <clears throat> now, about the side of the danger of the Kabbalah, so, like I said, there is, there is danger there, which is similar to in the physical for someone that is becoming to be wealthy. When you have more money, so you have to make sure that you're protecting yourself and your money. If you, if you, if you cannot take the responsibility and protect yourself, so don't be surprised if you get robbed and you're losing your money, right? But is it also more than getting robbed? Is it? Actually <coughs> Being careful that a person is not damaged because if, if he's so if he's going on a spiritual level higher and higher, is there like outside forces that are going to try to um, like damage him? Like that's exactly what I'm saying. The same way that a person that is wealthy, so when people see that he, that they, someone have a nice car parking next to his house and they see that he have a nice house that he, that is like you know full of luxuries. So everybody assumes that there's also a nice thing inside of the house. So it's, it will be very normal if there will be someone that will try to rob him, right? Yeah. So if he won't protect his house, if he won't have like security, if he won't have security cameras, whatever. So it's a, it will be a miracle if, if, uh, if he, nothing will be stolen, right? So I'm saying the same thing is in spiritual. Like there is physical robots, there is also spiritual robots. Same thing. So if if someone he, he doesn't want to take the responsibility, and he wants to live his life without without uh, taking himself seriously, so so he, he stays without money in the physical and without spiritual. Someone that he wants to build himself. So you need to build for all of those directions to take responsibility over it. Go together. Okay? 
and again, it's there's endless levels. It's not yes or no. Each one according according to wherever he's holding. And normally, normally, also Hashem is leading the person according to this to this principle, meaning someone that is not able to take responsibility on himself, so he won't he won't get involved with deep stuff of the Kabbalah. And even if he will, he won't find it interesting. He will feel that he doesn't understand it, and he will close the book and go to look for something else. The people that are dedicated to really go into the depths of the Kabbalah is people that are ready to take the responsibility for their spiritual wealth. That's the way it works. That's the, that's the there is exceptions. There is there is people that they are like. But usually, usually it doesn't last for long. So you, what? Usually, people that that they they do learn deep Kabbalah, and they don't take the responsibility on their life to make those spiritual protections that they spoke about. So it doesn't last long. They like so, something gets wrong, and they 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 lose themselves or something, whatever. It does it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't, uh, it doesn't survive. So it's the spiritual protection not only for not losing, like there's not enough. Um, vessel to hold all that spiritual abundance, but is it also a, a possibility that that's th those robbers will will make him physically damaged, like make him crazy or make him, you know, like make him like if, if a person is, has a nice car, right? So a robber might kill him or he might do or he might try to damage him. On again, it's, same, it's the same same thing. idea, same thing. So, I mean, he he'll get he'll get he'll get the, he, a person could get damaged if you a person that is trying to go over his limits and to go to very deep things of the Kabbalah and is not is not ready for that. Again, usually it won't happen because he won't he, he will lose interest. He won't understand, and that's it. He will just close the book and go to to for, look for something else. That's 99%. Okay, there is exceptions, unique people that are really, really pushing themselves to a place that they're not—they're not supposed to be there. And then you know, it's like like a, let's go back to the physical. Okay, let's say a poor man that is pushing himself into the rich people club. Right? What will happen? The doorman will take, will kick him out, beat him up. Right? Because you push yourself to a place that it's not belong to you, you're not supposed to be there. So someone will will you know give you a slap and, and throw you out. So that's 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 so this one percent of people that they, they they do push themselves to a place that they're not supposed to be there. So they get a slap and they they get thrown out. <clears throat> I'm not saying that that is something that the the people have to be scared of. Okay. I'm not, there is rabbis that, that they like to, to scare to like scare of people and say all kinds of stories about spooky stuff and things like that. I'm, I'm, I don't like those things so, so much. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It exists, but it's not my, my cup of tea. <laughs> this is my cup of tea. Doesn't it, doesn't it also say like even like a, even a Talmud Chacham has to be careful of going out on the street by himself. You should have somebody okay. accompanying... Yeah, right, the, right. That's, that's example. Same, same that, like exactly. That's exam example. That someone that is more rich, is more wealthy in his spiritual, so he needs to have more protection. So one of the things that he should not go by himself. He should have someone that is helping him. So the the person that is helping me him is not is also about the physical, but it's not the main thing. It's not about the physical. That when you have more people that are kosher people, so it builds up more spiritual protection. Right. That's also one of the things of Minyan. When someone is praying by himself, his prayer goes with no, without the the the, the benefit of other people's prayer. When you have when you're praying in minyan, so all the prayers together combine, and it builds up something that is bigger. So it's harder for the for some forces to grab it. Okay. <coughs> now. Above all of that, above all what we uh, just discussed, um, there is another point which is the state of the generation. Okay, that 
there's definitely a big difference in the way that people can access the information in our generation than past generations. So one of the main reasons that I started to do all of this activity online is because I saw that there's a lot of confusion about Kabbalah. Still there is, but I'm trying to, to get it minimized. But there is a lot of confusion that there's all kinds of people that they say all kinds of things without taking responsibility on what they say. And they don't, they don't know anything about Kabbalah. And they put all kinds of different words on the, on like on the internet. So I understand it's very, very important to have a reliable source of the traditional, authentic Kabbalah, the way that it is taught here in Yerushalayim, the old city of Yerushalayim, without all kinds of uh, phonemes borrowings. Okay. So this is an, another another reason that, for me, it's very important to to have this whole big operation because I see that it's needed, right? For example, one of the one of the common mistakes that many people in the world do, I think it's not, mostly it's not so much Jews, but there is many people that they look on Kabbalah as witchcraft. For them, it's the same thing. Witchcraft, black magic, Kabbalah, it's all the same thing, God forbid. Yeah. <coughs> Why is it? So there was there was some people that they wanted to show off what they know. And even though those original people they were very holy people, but the way that it was observed in the normal people's mind it would look like supernatural phenomena that they see also in their witchcraft so they make this comparison <coughs> now for me it's it's, uh, it's very offending to hear something like that I, I, one time i was like trying to to sell my 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 uh, book my sadr uh, tubishvat uh, with the Kabbalistic meditations and someone comment that it's a witchcraft so you know, so it's obvious that, that the person doesn't know what he's talking about but I see from that what is the what what's going on in, in people's minds so I hope that from those classes whoever is uh, patient enough to participate and to follow along and to join their practices and so on is people can get the, the real feeling of what it's all about. That it's nothing to do with witchcraft. They quite the opposite, exactly the opposite. Much better. <laughs> mm -hmm. The 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 whole idea you get is to connect to Hashem. Happen, you don't even need to do anything. The whole idea is to get to get the connection with Hashem. When you have the connection with Hashem, so then you don't have to worry about all the, all of the rest, right? If you, let, let's go back to the to the example of the of the of the money, of the physical uh, wealth. So when if you have someone that is your best friend, that is very very wealthy, and all the time whatever you ask him is giving you, so you don't uh, you don't have to do so much, right? You have something someone that is taking care of you. So if if uh, in the spiritual. When we connect ourselves to Hashem, so there's nothing, nothing else that, that that you can have desired because it includes everything within the connection to Hashem. Everything is included inside. <clears throat> so that's why all the time I'm saying that every time we're doing those meditations, all kinds of different applications of those learnings that we do. That again, it's introductory, but it's very, very real. Okay, even. I'm telling you now something that may, maybe you'll be surprised to hear it, but some of the practices that I do with you, there is people that are very very knowledgeable in Kabbalah and they learn years, and they don't they don't know those things. The practice of the of the meditation, there's many many people that they skip it in their learning. There's many people that they learn Kabbalah and it's only theoretical. It's not doesn't doesn't come into a practical practice <clears throat> so the reason I do that again is that people will have a taste of the real thing 
and hopefully anyone that is interested have to take the take the decision to be more responsible and to take himself in the right perspective the life the right perspective of what it's all about and to make the decision according to that each person in a, to, to make the calculation to make the decision to to bring it to bring the results to bring bring those decisions into his life in a practical way and once again as much as a person is taking on himself to build it to build himself in the right way Hashem is permitting him <coughs> to go deeper and to understand and I can tell you that not long ago there was a, someone that came here from LA and he told me that he almost doesn't speak Hebrew he cannot read like a letter in Hebrew but somehow he's opening opening Kabbalah books and he's reading a letter from the from the bank in Hebrew he won't be able to read but he's opening ancient Kabbalah books he's reading someone he, somehow he understands and he showed me many books that he have that books that I don't know yeah he found all kinds of ancient books and he's really like you know putting marks and this and then highlights you know serious he's learning it so how can it be you wonder right how can it be so the answer is when a person is ready to dedicate himself and he's taking those things seriously and he's putting his time and effort and dedication into those things Hashem is replying and answers him by giving him the permission to dwell inside of the wisdom. As much as you are dedicated, as much as you're giving to Hashem, <coughs> Hashem gives you much more than that. So, Bezrat Hashem, I hope that uh, it, those words fall on, the, on open ears and uh, that people that listens they take it seriously because it's very very ser serious matters and Bezrat Hashem we will continue and learn more and go deeper as much as Hashem will allow us thank you very much and see you tomorrow Bezrat Hashem